go, here we go, here we go. Emmanuel, that was so good! <laughs> go again. Three, two, one, nine. Welcome back to the Movement for Life podcast. We talk about ways to stay moving throughout our life. We're your hosts. I'm JR. And I'm Colby. Are you? Are you Colby? <laughs> I am Colby. Uh, welcome. It is 2024, uh, first week of yeah. January. How are we feeling Happy about the new, new year? year? Already. Yeah, feeling really good about the new year. What kind of goals do you have set for your new year? Do you set goals? Um, yeah, I typically do more of like a vision, um, vision, vision casting board? rather. Yeah. Rather than maybe doing something as, as specific as goals, but sometimes I also do goals on that vision board as well, or vision casting. Um, my biggest one that I've been sharing with everyone is doing exactly what we're doing right now. One of my, my big goals is to do uh, 52 podcasts throughout uh, the year in 2024, which is more or less once a week. That's a lot of podcasts. It's a lot of podcasting. That is right. But Unfortunately, you, know you are here for the ride. <laughs> um, I'm here for you. You're here for me. We're going to do it together. We're going to get it done. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that yeah, right. I think that about you? Um, I like to set goals. I don't like to set resolutions because in the past, I feel like resolutions, they always they always end up kind of just as something forgotten. And they tend to be really big, grand things that we... Mm we set with all good intentions, but they're just not maintainable. So a small goal here and there. So I have the goal of doing the LA marathon or the half. We're still not sure what we're going to do here. And that's coming up just in three months, yeah. less than three months. And then the Olympic lifting meet that we are hosting here at Oxnard movement in April. And yeah. those are like short-term goals. I have a few other things that I have shared and I'm not ready to share with everybody. But yeah, yeah, I think that like having, you know, maybe like quarterly goals for myself is something. And cool. I have been, I got a new iPad for Christmas. So I'm created this, this daily workbook where I go in and I, I put like my to-do list for the day and um, my workouts that I have planned for the day and just kind of try to keep everything in one place. And uh, it's been a great way to kind of keep me on track with everything I want to do. So love it. Here for goals. Awesome Christmas present. Yeah. I got I got myself a little the new watch? I didn't get Yeah, I got a Garmin what? watch for Christmas. Oh. Yeah. I didn't get it. It Who? was a gift from my parents, which is oh, okay. awesome. Um and yeah, I think that's gonna really help me stay on track as well. Help me do like littler goals, right? I can see a lot of the health metrics and I can say, Hey, I want to do an improvement in this specific area. Yeah. Um, whether it's sleep, whether it's HRV, whether it's VO two. Um It does all I that stuff say, that a whoop does. Yeah, more or less. It's it might be a, a more powerful whoop. The the data interpretation is a little bit cleaner on a whoop, uh, rather than on the Garmin. But I, I think overall the Garmin ends up having more powerful features. Um, so you just got to learn how to, how to read it appropriately. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Excited for it. Well, we um, like to start every podcast with talking about how we move. So um, Colby, yeah. why don't you like, give us some insight on your training and things that you did this past week? Yeah, I actually, so we had some amazing surf last week uh we got some waves that were 15 to 18 feet We've had sometimes some crazy crazy weather here that's created yeah. some good surfing conditions yeah we we saw there's lots of videos of like some waves going up into neighborhoods in pierpont and ventura um and i went and surfed that that was thursday morning so that matched those really big waves matched with a really high tide which is uh -huh. why that was happening and i surfed in the afternoon when the tide was a lot lower um, and I had a lot of fun. It was like 12 to 15 feet. Definitely. You know, you got to respect the ocean. I got held under a couple of times, thrown around a little That's bit. Scary. Um, I felt, I felt okay. I felt okay. Um, but definitely not something that I would suggest, um, somebody who's not a, an experienced waterman to be doing. Um, 
And then, yeah, so I surfed twice um, in the past week. And there were long surf sessions, two to two and a half hours of surf sessions. Um, and so that's exhausting. I was, actually, I was really sore from from those sessions. You got lats, uh, a lot of lat engagement and yeah, upper, and even my upper back, body. Upper back, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're kind of like in that little mermaid position, the aerial arch. Yep. The whole yep. time? All the time. <laughs> And you get exhausted and there's big waves coming in. You're like, I gotta, I can't stop and rest. I got to keep going. Um, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, That's great. What about you? What about you? Um, what, what did well, you do in the last week? And referencing back that goal of doing a uh, half or full marathon, I've just been trying to add a few more miles to my week. So I ran, I think eight miles last week and going to do eight to 10 this week, just over a couple of days and just working okay. on, you know, I have been running for the past six weeks, pretty regularly, a couple of miles here, a couple of miles there. Some days will be faster. Some days will be slower. So I'm just going to continue doing that. And I really need to sit down with a couple of different people and really decide if it's going to be a half or a full marathon so I can really lock in my training program for the run. Cause I like to be very prepared for the run. Yeah. And especially if I'm going to do an Olympic lifting meet three weeks after this, I have to really make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing beyond task with my sleep and with my food to make sure that it's not um, just a shit show when I show up that day. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So Let's see. Let's talk about some things. What yeah, do we, we have on topic? Today. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about choosing. How do we choose the type of movement that we should be doing? Um, how do we decide, like, I want to do this type of training versus that type of training versus, you know, yeah. um, high intensity versus low intensity versus orange theory versus CrossFit versus any other hiking versus backpacking, like, what, how do I figure out what kind of movement that I should do? Um, and that's kind of be kind of my first question um, for you is, hey, how do you choose a movement that works for you? And how, how do you know if it's going to work for you? Well, you don't always know. I don't always know. I mean, okay. I'll look at something that looks fun. And if it looks like something that I would enjoy, then I want to try it. and. Yeah, I have said before that a lot of things that I try at the beginning, I'm not very good at. But a lot of times that's what keeps me coming back because I want to see improvement and I feel Mm. like I can do it. There are some things that maybe naturally, like if there's like an orange theory, something that's like cardio based, I'm going to be a little more naturally inclined to be pretty good at the beginning. Um, But for a lot of things like start, it's just because it looks really fun. And for me... It really depends on what my mindset is at that time. So if I'm looking for a movement, maybe at that time in my life, I want to look a specific way. So I might kind of gravitate toward doing more of a bodybuilding type block or something that's going to make my body look a specific way. It's not always functional because it's more for aesthetic. Um, But if it's something that just looks like fun, then it's going to keep me coming back over and over again because I just enjoy it. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a big criteria for um, finding something that you're going to stick to is is fun. If it's yeah. not fun, you're probably not going to stick to it. Um, and what are what are a couple of other things that you think about when you choose something? Do you think like, hey, is this going to be like um, metabolic? more is this going to be strength training like do you think about those kinds of aspects when you're trying to find hey what kind of I training do. do i want to do it depends um, on like if i have goals like we talked about okay my running goal the race and then the olympic lifting meet so if i've set goals like that then i obviously am going to pick a very specific training that's going to allow me to be successful at that so i i have to make sure that i do my research and know that if I want to be successful versus just doing something, I mean, if I'm going to put myself out there, I want to be as successful as possible. So I make sure that I am choosing whatever training program that's going to accommodate my goal. And yeah. that's, I just kind of dive headfirst into it. I think it's really important for me to 
you know, be working with somebody who knows what they're doing. So when we're talking about the Olympic lifting meet, knowing like Angie and Christian on the side of like our body, our um, Olympic lifting coaches, they will have plans for me and they'll, they'll give me all the training program that I need for me to be successful. So that's important for me. Um, but there's been times in my life when I didn't have those experts around me. And that's when I kind of dive into the internet or books and look for as much information online that I can mm. to help guide me. And then I'm going to continue doing that kind of things. If there's fun people around me, like, you know, the greatest thing about CrossFit is you come in and you get around a lot of really cool people. And so those are the things that keep me coming back to that. Even after the goal is done, just because I've, I've surrounded myself with really cool people. I want to hang out with all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I am, Somebody is coming to mind, actually. Carlos is coming to mind right now. Oh, yeah. Um, when I'm thinking about, members. yeah, thinking about like you, and I, I, maybe he does think about this, so maybe it would be fun to have him on at some point. Carlos does all sorts of crazy um, adventures as yes. like, climbing volcanoes to like ice pick climbing um, to um, like multi pitch climbs for rock climbing to multi-day uh backpacking trips and i i'm i don't know if he's necessarily thinking like oh you know um something that's bringing him back are the people that are doing it with him but i think that for him maybe it's like some of the excitement or the the thrill of doing something that i, I don't know maybe is a little bit dangerous is actually um is something that draws him to do it over and over and over again or, or more of it. Um, they so are adventures. They're adventures for him. So when he's doing all that stuff, he's going on an adventure with many times by himself or with a few people, and he meets a ton of people there. Like He just recently yeah. went to Greece and did a marathon there. He went with, I think, one person that he knew, and they just met up with all these like-minded people. Like He speak Spanish. And so he ended up with all these Hispanic speaking people from all around the world, world in Greece. And they hung out. And those are like folks that you're going to be lifelong friends with from a distance, of course. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where you, you really kind of get addicted to the thrill of doing something that's fun, but also meeting new people. Mm, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. So there's, there's, yeah, I think training, training goals or expectations or like finish point, And then also maybe that excitement of, Hey, this is something crazy or different or maybe dangerous, or there's going to be right. new people that I'm going to meet is, is appealing to continue to do it. Yeah. Um, okay. I, maybe I got a, a different question then for you is, okay. um, what are what are some different uh, criteria that you should be thinking about that'll help you maintain an active lifestyle long term? What are some different criteria? So if we talk about you know professional athletes, we we all are are well aware that professional athletes have um, a, a clock, right? You can only be a professional athlete for so long. Um, so what are some some criteria or objectives so that whatever you choose to do, you could do it for a very long time. I think if we are making these recommendations for other folks, our listeners, I think setting small attainable goals over a longer period of time is something that's going to create sustainability versus going all in and making this big proclamation that I want to do this. And then after that, like what's left. So yeah. if we're talking about yeah, running, yeah. maybe if you come in like, hey, I want to be able to do a 5K and I'm going to give myself three months to prepare for that. I've never ran before. And you know, at that point, you know, it's all about learning how to run correctly. What's the maintenance like? How am I going to eat? You know, then fulfilling that 5K, seeing what your body feels like. Maybe you do several of those and then you go to the next step. It's a half marathon. And then from there, maybe it's a marathon. Then maybe that evolves into an Ironman. And that could be a three to five year journey. And setting small little goals over a long period of time is it's, it's going to be a safer way of you learning something new because you're not jumping in so fast that you're risking injury. But also, like we talked about earlier, like finding people to do things with, 
you know, like having a running club, being part of a group that kind of schedules your runs or being part of a fitness class like an Orange Theory or a CrossFit where you come in and, you know, those folks are holding you accountable for your attendance. You know, they they become friends with you and they want to see you. So if you don't show up, then guess what? You're going to get a phone call. You're going to get a text. And, you know, it's all about, you know, the overall enjoyment of being around those people. But I think at the end of the day, you want to see progress as well. So if I don't see progress in something that I'm doing, then, Mm. you know, how likely am I going to continue to do something? So if you are in it because you want a physical transformation, you need to take pictures. And like every three months or so, you need to, you know, compare where you're at now to where you were. Because in the moment, and I'm the worst at this, I won't, see those changes if I'm looking at me at that exact moment in time. But if I take a picture and then I go back and look at what I looked like three months ago, then like, oh, I actually can see the change. And for anybody who follows me on Instagram, you know, I like to take a lot of pictures without my clothes on. (laughs) So (laughs) well, some some clothes, some clothes. clothes. So, you know, like, but for me, I never, ever will look at myself and think I look amazing at that point. And then when I compare what I did look like, I can say, oh, I can totally see it in this moment. But it goes for like if you're doing CrossFit and you're keeping track of all of your work, you can see the progress over time. But you have to keep some kind of data in order to go back and retest. Yeah, I like that. That was two like pretty good, solid like criteria that you want to think about for long term. You yeah. said community like, hey, you, you need to find a group of people that you could do this with long term, like that it'll probably be included with um, for your you are going to be doing things with these people throughout your daily life. Um, these are friends of yours. These are community members um, that you're going to be associated with. And, you know, why I think that's important, because like the flip side of that could be um, like if my friends love going out to the bars every night. I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of staying up late. I'm going sure. to do a lot more of um, drinking, drinking on on weekends or weeknights, maybe even. Um, I I may, you know, if I surround myself with a community of people that do that rather than do something that's active, um, it's going to be harder for me to maintain an active lifestyle for a long term. Um, and then that second one that you said was was um, seeing progress. Uh, a, yeah, sense of accomplishment or measuring and 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 remeasuring measure and remeasure uh, which i think is an awesome criteria as well like we our body thrives on dopamine right and the dopamine one of like the biggest pieces with dopamine is a reward for seeing some sort of achievement yeah, or getting get something fix. um you know and there's simple example of that is like getting a notification on your phone from somebody like that's a reward like hey I accomplished something or somebody said something to me. And so we can, we can mimic that same thing with small achievements with whatever we choose to do. I think that's super important. Okay. So then let's talk about what being healthy means. Do, do I really have to move to be healthy? Can, can a person have a really healthy diet? Maybe they don't drink. And call themselves healthy, even though they're not moving. Like, what what part of movement really plays in the overall aspect of mm. healthy living? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I I've talked about it a couple of times before, and I actually just recently saw this with with um, Chris Cooper with letters and alliteration on like what it means to be healthy. But I think healthy is a pie chart of a bunch of different things. So I think that. If you're talking about overall health, you could probably be overall pretty healthy without exercise um, as far as like the circle of all of them. Um, And so some of the things that I think about when I talk about somebody who's living healthy is fitness, food, fun, finances, family and friends, friends and family and faith. Is usually like the six things that I'm like looking at in a circle um, of like a one to 10 score in each of those. So you could score pretty good in, in several of those things. And maybe you're still like a three or four in fitness, but you score sevens or eights in a lot of the other categories. Yeah. I would still consider you a, a fit person. 
Okay. Um, I think that, and the same is true of like a very fit person, right? Like you could potentially be a 10 in fitness, but you've got a, a two in your Terrible friends diet. and family <laughs> category. You've got a two in your, your food category. Um, you know, you, you don't manage your finances well, and you might not feel like, Hey, I'm a healthy person. You're like, I have overall, I've, I've got terrible habits. So I, I think that it, it adding more movement into uh, healthy living only boosts your health. Um, I, I don't think that there's any way that it doing more of it's going to take away and unless you neglect the other areas um, of what it means to be healthy. Okay. Uh, well, then let's talk about like different forms of fitness. So if we're comparing cardio yeah. to strength, and if we're looking at how that affects the body and how that improves like our quality of life, um, what does like data suggest um, cardio? I mean, we have two different kinds of cardio. We have low skill and high skill, and then we have strength training. So how yeah. does that play into our overall health? That's a great question. Um, and the, the general recommendation is a, a bare minimum. There's, there's two trains of thought, and I think that you probably are going to need both of them. Um, strength training is a massive indicator for longevity in older populations. Um, being able to recover from falls, being able to uh, maintain independence as we get older and older. Strength training has, has showed massive um, upticks in those those markers. But then we also got to think about um, some metabolic conditioning or cardio, right? And how that affects our condition of the heart. And one of the largest, we, we know this, one of the largest um, contributors to overall morbid, mid, morbidity in the U.S. is um, cardiac diseases. So uh, congestive heart failure, um, heart attacks, uh, coronary art, uh, artery disease. Um, so maintaining or working, stressing the heart muscle to maintain its, its um, I don't know if you'd say elasticity or you might want to say its, its own strength is a very important part. If, if I had to choose one, I'm probably going to pick, um, strength training over, um, cardio. And the caveat is I can't choose that if I also ignore food. Mm -hmm. Um, if I, I will have a better time with my health metrics if I do cardio and ignore food. If I do strength training and ignore food, I will probably um, come out with different results. Because you're burning um, more calories with the cardio, so that just can... Um, yeah. Okay. An active, an active calorie might yeah. be a, a much higher in a cardio activity, sustained energy output versus um, something in strength training where it's, it's a, a, a lower overall calorie count for the active calories. Um, but the value is in the building of the muscle during those strength training activities, not only muscle, but also um, bone as well. Um, when we can get um, improvements in bone density with one-tenth of the breaking force of a bone, more or less like strength training. <laughs> yeah. Any kind of strength training is going to improve bone density, which as we get older as well, that's something that we want to see that's not necessarily related to like calorie output for my training. Okay. Um, well then, uh, we're talking about like low intensity, medium intensity and high intensity. Um, which one is better? Like what, what does the data say about that? Yeah. Um, great question for, Somebody who is not currently doing any kind of exercise, um, the, the, the data suggests that you need to figure out something that's going to let you do something for a longer period of time. And the low intensity is, is the option for that. Um, we kind of talk about at the very beginning of this, we talk about athletes, right. And having time, time limits on the amount of time that they could do something. Yeah. Um, and so that's, 
that would be like me thinking of somebody who's coming in brand new, shouldn't be doing something that's high intensity right off the bat. They've sure. never done anything before because they're going to have a very short time span of what that's sustainable for before some sort of catastrophe of an injury would happen. So starting out with a lower intensity is a much, much better ad- idea. Once you've gotten some sort of um, base or habit developed, moving between alternating between medium or moderate intensity and high intensity bouts of exercise, I think is going to be the win in the long term. Okay. The data is very clear that intensity is the independent variable most commonly associated with favorable adaptations to training. It just means it's the fastest way to get return on what you're doing. The best way to get results for your training is use intensity, whether that's cardio intensity, whether it's strength intensity, whether it's skill intensity. Um, and that's that intensity typically has to be measured with the physiological and psychological tolerance of a person. So it's not an absolute intensity. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, it depends on where a person's at in their fitness. Yep. Coming in, we we always talk about we want to modify based on everybody's needs when they come into our CrossFit. So um, it absolutely makes sense that you would want somebody who's newer to fitness, that they're they're taking it easy and they're building a baseline, like you said, to be able to you know yeah. move for longer periods of time at a heart, uh, higher heart rate. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. We have like a new segment, I think. Okay. What yeah? is it? No, yeah. you, you, you go, you, it's your segment. All right. We're, we're going to finish, <laughs> finish today with a little, um, fun fact about your family. Fun facts. Fun facts. About your family. Fun okay. fact about your family. This is stuff that maybe the people who see us on a daily basis, they don't know about us. They, yeah. you know, like we come in to gym and, a lot of time it's shop talk. We talk about fitness. We talk about things we just did, maybe a movie we saw, um, but not a lot of opportunity in the gym to kind of get down and talk about, you know, really specific stuff about us. Um, that time to share is usually um, held to outside activities. Maybe sometimes yeah. we have a drink in our hand and we're, we're sharing a little bit more than we normally do. Um, so I'm going to go first. And okay. I think. I think you know this about me, but do you know how many brothers and sisters I have? You don't. I do not. Okay, well, I'm no. going to let you guess. I'm going to let you guess how many brothers and sisters I have, and then I want you to tell me where you think I fall on that order. Yeah, man. I want to say, like, I want to <laughs> I, I want to say you're, like, the youngest of five. <laughs> I don't know why. Why would you think I'm the youngest? Because <laughs> I feel like... You, that's where you inherited your, um, your desire to yes. tell p- other people what to do. <laughs> okay. He said I had the, I'm the youngest of five. I actually have 19 brothers and sisters. What? Yes. You didn't know this, did you? No. Yes. So quick story. Um, so I'm adopted. My parents adopted me when they were in their mid fifties. So they were already older parents. Okay. Um, and I was eight months old. My mom and dad had both been married twice before and had children from those previous marriages. So my dad came to the table with five kids. He had three boys, two girls. My okay. mom had three daughters and then they adopted me and, uh, another brother who is about three years older than me. He's not, um, my birth brother, but they adopted us at the same time. So in okay. that family, I was the youngest of 10. And then I went and hired a private investigator about 10 years ago or so to find my birth family. And they yeah. found all of my siblings and there's 10 of them. And Holy so smokes. I have 10 siblings. I was the youngest of all of them. So of my birth <laughs> family... <laughs> I was the youngest of the 11, so I have 10 siblings, and then in yep. my adoptive family, I'm the youngest of um, the nine. total of 10, so there's nine, so it's 19 brothers and sisters, yeah. Dang. So if you, I have like the youngest child syndrome by like a thousand. Times 10. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah, so it may, it really created a strong desire for me to be able to keep up with them, and you know, my brothers and sisters 
from my adoptive family are older because by the time my parents adopted me, their their kids were all adults. So yeah. I always was trying to prove something to everybody. And also just, I think being adopted in general made me have the desire to, to, to feel like I need to earn my keep. I mean, I always knew I was adopted. They always told me and my yeah. family's Caucasian, so I'm Brown. So there was no way that they were going to hide that, <laughs> but it really did create a strong, um, um, desire to work really hard. I had a high work ethic just because I was always trying to prove something that nobody asked me to do. Like that was yeah. all internal, but yeah, that's yeah. where it comes from. So yeah, that's cool. I yeah. did. That just blew my mind. That was <laughs> I right, was so way give me off. something. Give me your 19. What's your what are you comparing that to that? Man, I don't have anything nearly as exciting as that. Um I I was going to I have two different in in mind. My first one that most people don't know and it's kind of fun is my sister is actually pregnant right now and she's due in about 4 months. Oh nice. Um and so I will be an uncle, hopefully, in 2024. Yeah. Be the first time, first time for me. All right. That's awesome. You're going to be the yeah. fun uncle? I'll be the fun uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then what's the other one? You, had a, you have a second one. Yeah. The second one is my mom. Some people know this. Some people don't know this. My mom is a pretty competitive master's level CrossFitter. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, she got into CrossFit maybe four or five years after um, I started CrossFit. Um, and she's been to several different like Masters, the Legends competitions. No uh, way. Masters Fitness Collectives. No, she went um, to UFC? Not this last year, but she's been to them in the past. Okay. Did um, she go I two years ago? Couple, I think so. I was there at that one. I competed at that one. Really? Yes. I mean, there's, I mean, the, there is so many people at a master's competition because of all the age groups. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she's been in, she's been the most competitive in her 55 to 59 age range. And she's about to uh, move up into the 60. What is her plus. name? Debbie Christopher. Okay. I'm going to, I have a really good friend from another gym who's in that age group. And she okay. goes to all the legends in the MFC. I so mean, it's a pretty together. tight knit community. So they might, they might know that each other. That age group, especially like those ladies are like yeah. the guys and girls, the men and women in those upper age groups are phenomenal. And when yeah. I was at Masters Championship two years ago, there was a guy who was like 70 something and his strict pull-ups, his toes to bar, like he was like a rock star. Everybody wanted pictures with him because there's such inspirations. I think yeah. they're more inspirations to me than seeing the elite athletes because Knowing sure. that I'm closer to their age and what they're doing is far surpassing what I'm doing. It's, it's so inspiring. Yeah. I love watching them. Yeah. It's very inspiring. My mom has muscle ups and handstand push ups. That is crazy. Like, it's some of the coolest stuff. I have to, to see to this. To see. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Was she at the last legends that just happened? Did she go to that one? She didn't compete in it, but she did go to it. Oh, yeah. Cause it was close to where she lives. Right. It was in Phoenix. Yep. Yeah. yeah um, that's awesome. There was a lot of people from her gym that went and I, I think she, I'm pretty sure she withdrew. She did get it invited and then she withdrew from the competition. No way. Um, that is so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, we learn stuff about each other every time yeah. we sit down. That's right. Cool. Hey, this has been a really fun episode. Yeah, it has. It's been great. Um, we are going to keep the magic rolling. We have another episode coming next week. Um, if you like the podcast, we ask that you please subscribe, rate us. We are on all the platforms. We're on Spotify. Yeah. We are on iTunes. We are on Amazon Music. Any platform. On your YouTube. Favorite, on you YouTube. YouTube. So if you want to watch us, see our faces what we look like, what my hair is looking like. You're going to notice that oh Colby's hair is going to drastically change from week to week as you watch yep. these podcasts. So take notice. Um, but we appreciate all the comments and all the feedback that you have. If there is a specific topic that you want to hear about, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll love you guys. Next and week. we'll see you next week. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Here we go, here we go, here we go. Emmanuel, that was so good! <laughs>
<laughs> Go again. Three, two, one. Five.